Hey guys, welcome to episode number one of Cryptic Conversations. We have a very special guest today for episode number one. Um, the guest goes by Sunny, also known as Sunlight Oracle. She's a psychic and a medium. Um, so uh, be sure to stick around to the end of this show because she has a free gift for all of you guys. And so yeah, be sure to stick around to the end so you can find out how to gain access to your free gift. Um, so yeah, so today's guest, uh, where do I begin? Um, so my sister, I think she found you on Reddit. Um, I think that's in, was like in the beginning phases of your business. Um, um, you're offering uh, your services, you know, to start your business, to get things going. And um, my sister, man, like, you know, I rewatched the video. I rewatched the video that you guys did. And I was I was blown away because, you know, I feel like in the, in this industry, there can be a lot of skeptics. And, um, you know, I was rewatching the video and there was just certain things that you called out. Like, I think it was like the knitting and the yarn. And it was like, it was so spot on, like there's no way, like it's, it can't be a coincidence, you know? And so, um, and then the same thing. So then Holly, my sister, she booked you for my, uh, my mom's birthday. And once again, you know, sometimes I'm skeptical to these things, you know, and, you know, I'm sitting back and I'm watching and I'm, and I'm listening and, you know, some things are not like a hundred percent precise, a hundred percent accurate, but there was just one thing that just like blew our minds, you know, cause, uh, the day of the day of the reading, you know, it was my mom's birthday and a butterfly flew across, like right across her face, like it almost hit her in the eyes. And she knew that to be a sign. And so she told me about, about this, but she didn't tell anyone else. And my mom was kind of like, all right, well, we'll see like if, if the, if, if you bring this up in, in the reading and sure enough, you know, it was about like an hour in halfway in, I think you said that, uh, my mom, her mom and her aunt were coming through and that they wanted to give you a sign and the sign was the monarch butterfly and when you said that my my mom's mind was blown and so was my so was mine and so i just want to say you know i you know i feel like in any industry there's going to be the real and there's going to be the fake the phonies you know the, especially these days with coaches and all that um but uh sunny sunlight oracle is the real deal um so nonetheless Sunlight Oracle is a psychic medium based in Los Angeles that works with clients worldwide. She connects people to their loved ones on the other side through evidential mediumship. She also runs workshops and online courses that help folks locate their intuition, establish a meditation practice, and connect to the divine power within themselves. Welcome, Sunlight Oracle. Thanks for having me, and yes. I appreciate the um, the review of the readings that I have done for your family. Um, yes. That's kind of what connects me to you. Yeah. And I feel like we're connected perhaps in several ways, but yeah. that one is remarkable. And the reading with your sister, Holly, initially, I will always remember. Mm. Um, and the, the reading for your mother's birthday was yeah. also really interesting to me. I remember, um, connecting her with her loved ones. And then also all of us singing happy birthday to her <laughs> over zoom. Yeah, <laughs> so That's like, that's just, th those are moments of human connection, whether you're oh, skeptical yeah. of the other side or not, that are just really, you can't argue that those are special moments. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. So, I mean, thank you for, for joining on, on this first episode. You know, I know it's early on a Saturday morning, so, you know, thank you for being here. Um, so yeah, you know, to, to kind of kick things off, um, I just kind of wanted to talk about like the state of the world, you know, I feel like, I feel like we're kind of in like this creative and information renaissance, you know, there's, there, it's just a crazy time to be alive, you know, there's like threat of World War Three, you know, we're coming out of a global pandemic, you know, aliens are becoming more and more accepted and, and acknowledged as being real, you know, and, um, you know, even with human sexuality and, you know, with, you know, transgender and, you know, I feel like humanity is just like evolving into this next form of humanity. And it's just a strange time to be alive. And, <laughs> you know, I think, um, and also anxiety, like, I think anxiety levels are like higher than ever, you know, I, I'm hearing it more and more. And, you know, I just wanted to get your feedback on like, you know, the current state of the world. And, you know, like, you know, how can people, um, overcome their anxiety, especially in the crazy time that we're living right now, you know? Yeah, that's a good question. And there are a couple of things you said that 
uh, I would address, which is the first one being that we just, the people who are listening to this, like have survived a global pandemic and that uh, level of intensity for everyone, whether they are conscious of it or not, uh, has pushed us to consider all paths, all mm -hmm. ways of understanding yes. our existence in the world. And uh, I know for me and for many people I associate with, and perhaps you would agree with this as well, is that that time uh, really uh, expedited a lot of growth in consciousness for a lot of people collectively, again, and individually. So when you're, the things that you're mentioning um, about just like radical acceptance of different lenses through which we see the world. I do, mm -hmm. I really do think the pandemic has a, a lot to do with that. Oh yeah. You know, and also what comes with that when we, when perhaps um, you're in the camp of people that did not predict this uh, pandemic or uh, expect the level of grief that really accompanied that, of course, you're going to get anxiety because mm -hmm. your mind and your being have not been <laughs> likely pushed to that level yeah. of processing, mm -hmm. right? The yeah. energy or the people, mm -hmm. or, or I'm sorry, or the grief. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like with, with radical acceptance and anxiety, I often find those things go hand in hand and it does take time for your system to really um, acclimate to the level of change that we are experiencing as a uh, human beings, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like that's kind of where my business really finds a place in the mm -hmm. collective is offering different ways, perhaps ways that you didn't learn in school, mm -hmm. right? Or yeah. from your family growing up to really get comfortable with your intuition, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, sort of an irrational psychological function. It's something yeah. that in a logic-based society, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. it's like, no, that's not yep. real. Like yeah. if there's no evidence of it, or I'm sorry, if there's not like hard evidence or sufficient evidence of it being real, then it's, it's unacceptable. But mm -hmm. with the pandemic, with the collective grief, with the kind of up leveling in consciousness that I've witnessed mm -hmm. uh, as a result of that, I do feel more and more people getting comfortable with their intuition or with alternate tools to yes. gear up for this um, raising of collective consciousness. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, man. Great. That's a great answer. It's just, like I said, it's just I don't know. It's just a crazy time to be alive, you know, and I can, mm -hmm. I can see why people are struggling and, you know, so yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sending my love out to everyone, you know, and we got to stick it through. Um, so yeah, I mean, with that, I'd like to discuss uh, synchronicities, you know, sure. what are your thoughts on synchronicities? Um, do, do you notice them on a daily basis? How frequently, or, you know, what are your thoughts on uh, synchronicities? I think synchronicities are really lovely um, idea that keeps people interested in their spiritual path. I almost see mm -hmm. it as, uh, it's almost like an anchor, right? Because mm -hmm. when you do start to have doubts or you do start to wish to revert to your life before you've experienced any kind of awakening in consciousness or healing, however mm -hmm. you want to look at it, these synchronicities that really, I'm, and I know that you know this, like they feel undeniable. They don't feel like coincidences. There, there's no argument within yourself that this mm -hmm. is something greater yeah. than you or something uh, just remarkable, yeah. right? And so I, I love synchronicity. I, you've already mentioned um, briefly just some of the readings that I've done with you and some of those sort of synchronicitous moments that occur in the reading that make you feel connected to something mm -hmm. bigger than yourself. Um but I also want to say like there, I find this a lot in readings. Like when it comes to the end of a reading, it's often um, I can sense either in the client or from the other side that there should be a sign established, like a method of communication, which is a big part of my work, honestly. And very often I receive the information that the client is seeing repeating numbers some people call these angel numbers. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's kind of mainstream, honestly. Mm -hmm. It feels like yeah. angel numbers are kind of mainstream. But uh, I do, I have spent a lot of time kind of investigating why is that and why does that come up so often for yeah. people. And my feeling is that it, the way I see it is how I should say mm -hmm. this. The way I see it 
is that the intuition, again, the irrational psychological function that I believe can lead you to healing and uh, higher consciousness is what's responding to those numbers. It's causing you to see that number at a certain mm. time. So if you keep seeing 222 two, two on the clock or you keep mm -hmm. seeing 333 three, three on the license plate, I don't necessarily feel like it's an external factor. I feel like it's more of an internal factor, if that makes sense. Your intuition mm. becomes aware of that and brings your eyes to it. And that okay. is, again, the comfort that you receive to continue on your path, whatever this path, however yeah, yeah. you understand, um, okay. whatever path you're so you, on. So you see them as internal. I do. I feel yeah. that the, specifically with the repeating numbers, and I say mm. that because- oh, okay because I know that is in my work, that's the mm -hmm. most common question to be yeah. honest. Like that's the FAQ yeah, <laughs> frequently yeah. asked question is like, what is up with these repeating numbers? And yeah. I feel like it's uh, more of an internal, it's, it's you, your soul mm -hmm. communicating to yourself that you are in alignment or that yeah. you are on the path. Yeah. So growing up, you know, like I, I'm sure you can relate to is like growing up, I would always have these it would be numbers sometimes, but a lot of the time it would be like a certain word would come into come into my life and I would hear it. It'd be this new word that I never heard and I'd have to learn it or something. And then next thing I know, it just over and over, this word would come to me and I'd be like, oh, I, I didn't, mm -hmm. when I was younger and like growing up, even until I was like 18, I would always have them and I didn't know what they were, but I, I just felt deeply, like, I guess that's my intuition. Mm -hmm. I felt, I felt deeply that these were signs from the universe or whatever that were telling me that I was on the right path. And, and I, I always enjoyed those moments because I was like, oh, okay, I'm on the right path. Because sometimes you, you get lost in your mind or, you know, sad or depressed, you know, emotions of life. And you're wondering, am I on the right path? And whenever I would get those, I, I would love it so much. And um, I think I didn't, I didn't find out what a synchronicity was until maybe 10 years ago or five years ago, even. And, and that's when I was like, oh, so yeah, I was, I was, I wasn't crazy. Like, you know, that's that they have a term for it. It's a synchronicity, you know? And, um, so with that, um, about like for a month now, like I was, or this was like a few months ago, but for a month, a month long, I kept seeing the word cryptic, like, mm. and, and it's like my DJ name is tunes from the crypt. My slogan is mystic and cryptic or whatever. And I would see that word over and over. And it was like tripping me out. I was like, especially like in like a TV show that wouldn't use that word. Like, like it, it was happening over and over. And I was, and, and I was like, I, I think that's a sign that like, yeah, pursue DJing, you know, like pursue that or, and then now I'm starting the podcast and I was like, okay, cryptic, okay. Cryptic conversations. And so, yeah, I just think, you know, they define synchronicities as uh meaningful coincidences. And I, I just think that, yeah, I think they're, they're an amazing thing to notice. And, and when you notice them, uh, listen to it and and follow it, and it's taking you down the the correct path in life. Um, yeah, it's yeah. like it's almost like for me, it's like a green light because like sometimes mm -hmm. these synchronicities. I can give you an example of something that happened to me yesterday, which is um, just kind of like funny. And I try not to read too much into the meaning of the actual synchronicity, what the subject matter of the synchronicity is, because. I tend to go down rabbit holes, oh, yeah. my mind can spiral. So it's like, you know, I got to stop it somewhere. But I was watching um, a, a, a live music performance with Ben Harper. I don't know if you know Ben Harper mm -hmm. um, and his mother. And they were doing a live music performance, whatever. It was on YouTube or something. And it's from 2014. And uh, his mother was wearing a pair of Ugg boots. Okay. I haven't seen Ugg boots <laughs> in who, I haven't thought about Ugg yeah, boots, yeah. I don't, whatever. And I mentioned um, to my partner, I was like, wow, Ugg boots. I wonder if they'll ever make a comeback. I said this out loud. Okay. <laughs> like I w never thought anything yeah. else of it. Moved on with my day. And then <laughs> last night I received a text from my friend who sent me a link and a meme about Ugg boots, right? That completely unrelated mm -hmm. from I've just seen Ugg wow. boots for the first time yeah. in 15 years, spoke it. And then <laughs> something about this friend of mine must have been picking up on something and, wow. sent, and we were laughing. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, you don't even know like just how, again, synchronicitous this is. Yeah. Now, do Ugg boots mean anything to me? No, not, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. However, this connection, something about the, that feeling of when you see or know or hear mm -hmm. or feel that connection. It just, you can't argue with it. Yeah. It's just, it makes me laugh, you know? Yeah. And 
I take I, it as a good sign. I think it, I, I think it means you got to buy a pair of Uggs. <laughs> it could be. It could be. <laughs> or something. I don't know. Um, so silly. Yeah. So also, I would like to discuss. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm about 400 days sober now. Um, mm. I've been this past year, I've been just doing a lot of time alone and just like reflecting on life and, you know, everything that got me to this point and, um, you know, doing a lot of work on myself, you know, I've been, uh, I've seen a couple of hypnotherapists mm. and, and the first one was great. It was over zoom. And I, I noticed like a 10% increase in like, you know, just like becoming better. Mm -hmm. And I thought I would like to try it in person because I thought the results would be even more profound, you know? And so this last hypnotherapy experience was kind of weird. There was something strange that happened. And I would like to tell you the story, you know, real quick and mm -hmm. see what your thoughts are on it. Um, <clears throat> so, so basically, and it's this crazy story how I found my hypnotherapist too. Um, but so I drove to her office in La Cunada. We go into her room, you know, and, and I just sit on the couch and I brought like a sleeping mask and I, 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 I tilt back and I'm relaxing. I have my sleeping mask. And she starts guiding me through this uh, meditation, through this uh, hypnosis. And in the beginning, I feel my mind kind of, uh, this is not going to work. This is this is bullshit. This is not going to work or whatever. And then, it, like, it's interesting because it's like, and then she guides me deeper and deeper. And I feel my eyes, like, it's almost like rapid eye movement, the REM sleep cycle or whatever. It's like, I feel my eyes, like, twitching. And then it's like, and then, boom, she goes like, five, four, three, two, one, you're deep, you know? And I feel my eyes go back. And I'm like, wow, like I'm in this subconscious state. I could feel it. And it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. And um, anyways, the, the stuff that she was guiding me to, she was like, you know, talking about, oh, you're going down these stairs and, you know, you're going to the beach and there's a waterfall, this and that. She's describing, you know, the environment. And I swear I heard birds. Like it was, I heard birds. Like it was the most vivid thing that I heard, like out of the whole hypnosis. Like it was so vivid. And after it was done, I looked at her and I, uh, she, you know, she's asking me like, oh, how was it or whatever? And I told her, I was like, I straight up heard birds like, like, <laughs> like I was at, like I was at the beach, you know, like, like it was so vivid and she was laughing and she was like, well, you know, the windows closed you know, there's no birds, the, the shades are closed and everything. And she was kind of laughing about it. So, you know, I didn't think anything of it. And then, you know, my parents are kind of, they're getting older, you know, and I like to go visit them, you know, a couple times per week, go check on them or whatever. And so after the session I was driving to go visit them and I saw the strangest bird like in the middle of the street and like you know it might sound like but no this was a strange bird it was a big white bird like it was like a stork I, and it was in the strangest place and it was like I was driving and I'm looking at it, and he was he was frozen and he was just like frozen there and I'm driving and I'm like do the neighbors have like a bird statue in their street like what, what's that and as I got closer he I saw his legs and he started like walking away and I I pulled my phone out and I'll, I'll show you the video too. And I pulled my phone and I started to record it because it was such an amazing looking bird. And, um, and as I was driving past him, it was like, he looked, I swear, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but it, it felt like he was looking into my soul. Like he gave me like that side eye and he wasn't afraid of my car or anything. He just, he was looking into my soul, you know, and it was, it was a very strange experience, you know, and I didn't realize it. And then I, I, I thought back, I was like, Oh, and I heard birds in that hypno uh, in that session, you know? So, I don't know what the meaning is there, you know, but I start looking into the, the um, I start looking online and the bird is called a great white egret. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and, and there's all these uh, spiritual meanings to this bird. And, and then he was in front of house number 18, you know, and I'm, and then I'm getting into numerology, you know, so sometimes I get like, I also go down these rabbit holes or whatever. So I don't, I don't know what it, what it is or whatever, but it was just a strange experience. Yeah. And you should, you know, it feels like it was meaningful to you and you mm -hmm. can't argue with that. Right. Like, that's the thing is like, it meant something to you. You felt it. Uh, it sounds like in your subconscious as well. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what counts. And yeah. um, with sometimes it helps like the internet is a crazy place. Right. <laughs> and so <laughs> sometimes it helps to find like, if you felt something really profound with this egret and you wanted to um somehow incorporate that into your spiritual practice i would recommend mm -hmm. uh you know checking out some symbolism but understanding that those are also other human beings who have written what the symbolism oh, yeah. is to them which is mm -hmm. awesome um 
but it's almost like dream interpretation is kind oh, of yeah. also what I feel like you're talking about where it's mm-hmm. like, well, what does it mean to you? Right. Mm-hmm. And like, then you could go back into that memory of when you saw, you said it was frozen. It was in the middle of the road. And then you can decide what does that mean to me? Like, what mm-hmm. does it mean that he's in or that this bird is in the middle of the road? That's a symbol. Mm-hmm. And you can start breaking it down in your own vernacular and i guarantee you it will in the long run mean a lot more and Mm. uh, build upon itself in your spiritual practice than if you consult the internet again the internet being a great place to start or a book even you know Mm -hmm. of spirit animals or something spirit guides Mm -hmm. but ultimately you're on this path yourself and i think Mm -hmm. that's like the coldest reality of it is that um, as you start to awaken and increase your awareness, which is what it sounds like you're doing is like your awareness is heightening and you are mm-hmm. uh, noticing more. Right. And with that, like, Oh, I lost my train of thought there. I must, I lost my train of thought. It's all good. Yeah. It was, it was just crazy because it was like this bird, like is only around bodies of water and like there was no water around, you know? So it was, yeah, it was just very weird. I'll send you the video and you know, you can uh, check it out. Oh, um, that's what I was going to say though. Is like you, this is your, your path, my friend. Mm-hmm. And so like take all those details that you've already noted. Yeah. And this goes for your listeners as well, because mm-hmm. you are not the only person who has these moments of oh, like, yeah. what does this mean? Mm-hmm. And it, it means exactly what you feel it to mean and evoking that feeling of connection that you felt when it looked into your eyes or you had that connective moment is what is going to uh carry you through this journey that that is more important than the bird itself do you Mm -hmm. understand what i'm saying yeah cool yeah cool so moving on um yeah look enough about me let's talk (laughs) about you um uh so yeah you know tell me like your early life, you know, what, you know, where were you born? Where did you grow up? You know, that kind of sure. thing. What yeah, family actually, like? totally. Um, I'm actually from a small town called Danville in Illinois. So the Midwest middle of the country, mm-hmm. uh, very different from California in every sense. Um, I grew up there and a lot of people ask me, um, if I had sort of like mediumistic experiences, as a child that and that's a very um natural question to ask a medium and for me i uh the first uh seven years of life are just kind of hazy you know Mm. like i'm not really sure but what i can speak to that is um i had really vivid imaginary friends Mm. uh i know a lot of kids have imaginary friends mine Mm -hmm. were very real and Mm, uh, a very big part of my life for a long time and so uh, I do believe there's like some kind of connection there looking back with all the knowledge that I have now about spirit communication, yeah. wow. but that's kind of the extent of like, as a child that I know about. Okay. And that's mm-hmm. the other thing is like, um, both of my parents, they aren't particularly spiritual mm. or even religious or anything yeah. like that. And so even if I had been saying kind of bizarre things or mm-hmm. sharing any sort of story about spirit communication, I'm not so sure that uh, anyone would have known that that's what I was doing. You know, what I mean? yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't really know. How did they, but... how did they handle it? Did, did they notice it? And how did they handle it? Oh, you mean like uh, in my adult life now or Or like when you were a kid, like, you know, if you're, Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Like I, I, again, I don't, I don't know if I said anything or what I would have said, but what I can trust is like, I was very imaginative, very artistic and still am to this day. And Uh all of those things really are connected. I believe to the ability to do what I do, you know? Cool. Okay. So, so that's kind of when you were a kid and then how Mm -hmm. about like, you know, into into middle school into high school sure. into your adult life you know how did sure. how did things play out and yeah I'm still trying to make sense of that myself and I should mention here um that I'm also in recovery and I have three years and some change now nice and a lot of that uh you know when we enter recovery I do think it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle it's like what what led me to you know abuse drugs and alcohol in the first place and for me like if I had to simplify it it does feel like I'm just a hyper sensitive person and I didn't yeah. know that <laughs> and so uh through middle school and high school there are lots of like uh 
events or traumatic events and oh. things that like maybe like wouldn't disturb some people as much as they did me because mm-hmm. I'm sensitive, but I didn't know that. Yeah. Right. And so that's also part of my work is helping people who are just naturally sensitive kind of like accept that and <laughs> use it to yeah, um, yeah. empower themselves and others. Mm-hmm. But with all of that, um, I, I think, I think I was just really sensitive. But, you know, Mm. trying to um, conform in a society that isn't, (laughs) yeah, you know, or didn't feel as sensitive as me. And that eventually leads me into, um, yeah, drugs and alcohol and abusing substances. And Mm -hmm. that was kind of like a slow escalation for Mm -hmm. me as well. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it's been since getting sober three years ago and stripping Mm -hmm. all of that away that I was able to come back home to my psychic self and to this person who's been here all along, but wasn't really fitting into the world that she was born into. So that's part of, I think, a lot of psychics journeys, to be Mm -hmm. honest, not necessarily the addiction piece, but the Mm -hmm. piece where it's like, oh, I was like trying to be normal and I'm I'm actually just like not and that's okay. (laughs) Mm hmm. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that, you know, being a sensitive individual myself, you know, I, I think I started drinking when I was 14. And, you know, mm-hmm. I wanted I wanted to fit in with the cool kids and, you know, mm-hmm. start started partying and started getting in trouble. And, um, you know, that's kind of where it all started. And, and looking back on it, it's like, man, when you're 14, like, that's such a pivotal moment to like, grow into, you know, your teenage years, you know, to grow into becoming an adult and letting your mind develop and, you know, and I, you know, such a, you know, such a shame, you know, to do that, you know, but, you know, it, it is what it is. And, you know, we learn, mm-hmm. we learn through our experience experiences and, and yeah, I mean, um, so yeah, it's, yeah I'm 400 days now. So you said you're three Congratulations. Years, Congratulations. Three for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's, it's always worth celebrating because once you've, <laughs> Uh, stepped into your recovery and started doing it and looked into the abyss. Like, I think it's important that we tell each other like way to go so that we keep going. And also Mm -hmm. just like acknowledging that as sensitive people, this work, like getting sober is, Ooh, it's, it's, it's difficult. Right. Mm -hmm. And so congratulations. And like, this is me telling you, like, keep going as well. (laughs) You (laughs) You too. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. You know, especially like, I feel like alcohol is like, Mm -hmm. um it's so socially normal and socially accepted and it's honestly it's the worst I think it's the worst (laughs) it's pretty it's pretty bad I'm with you yeah (laughs) (laughs) so you know there's a lot of people out there struggling stuck in their ways and you know I'm wishing them wishing them the best and you know totally yeah all right so uh moving on you know to your practice um Mm. so what methods do you use to communicate with spirits and you know Mm -hmm. how how would you say that you interpret these messages and everything yeah that's a really that's a really good question (sighs) so for me the way that it works is like I I should say that my spiritual practice itself is non-negotiable for me like as a professional psychic medium it's something that I have to do every day and it does look like um, I do yoga for one to connect Mm. you know mind body and spirit but I also have like very um disciplined meditation practices that have been taught to me by teachers. Um, You know, I've studied with other psychics and mediums. When I started coming into my gifts, I needed some guidance as well, because it can be pretty um, uh, earth shattering. And I say that because Mm -hmm. I feel like someone listening to your podcast (laughs) is is going through that or is Mm -hmm. going to soon. Yeah. Um, So it's important to find guides is one thing I want to say, but that these practices are almost like ancient in a way and Mm -hmm. um time honored and they've been passed down and they get passed down so that is like the work right like that's Mm -hmm. the practice itself that keeps me available Mm. to the other side as Mm. a medium to reliably uh deliver messages because if you don't do that kind of work if you Mm -hmm. just uh, kind of start doing this and there's no no real foundation you mm-hmm. run the risk of projecting your own uh, experience mm. onto the people for whom you read or mm. you know what I'm saying yeah. like you really need to learn like through um, meditation and subconscious work like what it, these different things feel like what does extrasensory perception feel mm. like versus mm. deep imagining like mm. or like 
uh, visual uh, manifestation or whatever people are doing these days. It's like mm -hmm. they're, they are different. This information does come from different places, mm -hmm. which is kind of what we we're talking about with synchronicities earlier. Mm -hmm. Some things yeah. coming internally and some things for me really do come externally. And so being really devoted to meditation practice that I've learned is what makes that possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so what about, you know, like, so when you're in a session with someone, you know, mm -hmm. like, I'm imagining it's like, you get these images or pictures almost in your mind. And, and that's mm -hmm. how you're able to relay information. Um, talk a little bit about that, you know? Yeah, of course. How's, how is that experience like? Sure. So what you're describing is accurately is called clairvoyance, mm -hmm. which is like um, a sense, an additional sense that not even, I mean, I believe everyone's psychic. I should say that here too. And everyone can develop these uh, mm -hmm. abilities. Very mm -hmm. important that people realize that sometimes um, people are born like on a spectrum, right? And they're born like with very psychic gifts automatically that have been nurtured and they do it their whole lives. But please know that everyone is capable of developing these gifts. Mm -hmm. So there's clairvoyance, which is what you've described. There are also other clair senses. And you were talking about one earlier when you were talking about your hypnotherapy session with the birds and hearing birds, which is known as clair audience, mm -hmm. clear hearing. Mm -hmm. There is clair sentience, which is clear feeling, which is truly when I don't prefer that sense but like let's say i'm reading for someone who um i'm i'm reading for them and their father passed of a heart attack mm -hmm. i could potentially feel you know uh, uh something in my heart like uh, i don't i don't love that one but it is uh very informative in certain situations oh okay Claire sentience was the other one I was going to tell you. Uh, Claire cognizance is kind of really connected to the intuition. And I think you've probably experienced this too, where you just kind of know things like you don't know why you know it, mm -hmm. but you yeah. just do. And mm -hmm. then the last one I'll mention is um, Claire Gustance, which is a very interesting one. And it's clear tasting. Uh, oh, and wow. It's a, yeah. And for me, it kind of operates as like, I can often tell if someone was like the person on the other side who's connecting with me was a smoker because I will oh, taste wow. smoke or tobacco or oh, wow. um, stuff like that. So it, that one's pretty cool. And oh, I've been wow. working with that one a lot lately, hmm. but everyone is capable of developing um, these gifts. It's mm -hmm. really just a matter of like, how much do you want to do it? And mm -hmm. some people will feel like I don't really have a choice in developing it because it's already happening to me. <laughs> and some mm -hmm. people might just be like, you know, I go to um, psychic workshops or psychic classes sometimes, and you have your skeptics in there, you have your intellectuals, you have your scholars there who are really just like curious if they have the ability or if they could mm -hmm. develop it, you know, and that's, that's another, that's a whole other conversation. But um, I do think it part of my message as a psychic medium with, you know, today, the gift of speaking on this podcast is that people should know that they can do that too. They can mm. do all of that. Okay. So, so, okay. So it's not just pictures or images then, you know, it's a combination no. of all, all the senses and you, you know, you're just having all these feelings from every angle. That's my belief. I think some old school people like, you know, in the psychic industry might say, they might just identify as like clairvoyant. Like I'm sure you've heard that before. They'll sit in the seventies, like everyone was a clairvoyant, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. now I think there's just a greater awareness collectively that like, no, there are so many different methods of communication. And when you open yourself up to more, you can get more information for your client mm -hmm. and be a more effective medium for the other side. And mm -hmm. for the person who's sitting in front of you, who's mm -hmm. maybe experiencing grief or, loss or just need some kind of guidance from the other side altogether mm, yeah okay yeah I, I can definitely agree with that for sure yeah mm -hmm. cool so um how about can you give me an example of a reading that you did for someone that was part particularly impactful or meaningful yeah it's it's funny because I do I really will always remember the reading with your sister Holly mm. um who just we had a soul connection immediately and that happens with <laughs> clients sometimes it's just like whoa you just like mm. know you've known each other before or something oh, wow. and um so uh, i should say here like there parts of holly's reading are actually available on youtube she allowed me to cut some of that reading into mm -hmm. an informational video when i first started my business so if anyone listening wanted to watch like real mediumship that video exists mm -hmm. 
Um, but also I got really into um, what I call spirit portraiture last year, which was like, I'm an artist and they, the other side started using my artistic intelligence to communicate spirit messages as well. And I was drawing a lot of the contacts from the other side and delivering oh, wow. these portraits to the sitters, which was really fun and really cool. And it's starting to kind of rev up again. Oh, I'm wow. grateful like because it comes in phases, but mm -hmm. um, I was learning. Now there's not a lot of information out there about spirit portraiture. It kind of feels like it's, it's coming. Do you know what wow. I mean? Like it will become something, uh -huh. but so I was really um, doing a lot of my own research through my own clients mm -hmm. and something really bizarre happened where I, I would stay up at night and just drawing faces <laughs> and writing messages like for hours. Wow. Like I was like, whoa, this is, this is wild. And then I would um, date them, label them. And um, what do you call that? Like archive them. So I know uh -huh. where they are. Okay. And so I was doing that and I didn't know I was doing it, but I just trusted the process and I was one day reading for this woman who was actually in the Philippines. We were doing an international oh, wow. reading. We were chatting and I, I was connecting her, I believe, to her grandfather and to her father. And so we're talking. And what happened while I was talking specifically about her grandfather is that with my clairvoyance, I saw an image that I had actually drawn a few weeks before, but I knew mm -hmm. exactly where it was because I had dated it and labeled it. And so I took a leap of faith or trust mm -hmm. rather. Oh, and wow. I was like, I feel like I've connected with your grandfather before, oddly enough. And I believe I have an image of him oh, that wow. I drew. <laughs> and she, I was like, are you open to receiving that? And she was, and I pulled it up. And sure enough, the likeness was there and the messages corresponded with our reading that we were already doing. And so oh, wow. it was really far so how, out. <laughs> how, did, how, did, how did she react to that? I mean, I... It's hard to say. I mean, mm. I think it was pretty magical for both of us. Like, what do you say in that moment? She mm -hmm. didn't know it was coming. I didn't know it was coming. It literally came like all at once. And yeah. I was able to feel the power of both spirit portraiture and mediumship combined, yeah. which is really effective in, mm -hmm. in what we try to do as mediums, which is not only connect you with your loved ones on the other side, but also heal some of that pain on both sides mm -hmm. for both parties, right? Yeah. And that's what that's what the work is about. And that's what was felt in the moment of like, also look at this, you know, image that yeah. I drew of him at an, a, as an elderly person, it was, yeah. so the, it, I guess that's just like a good example of like things you just can't explain. And I don't really take a lot of time trying to explain it to people anymore because I've had enough experience as a psychic medium to know that there's something more than there's something bigger than us. And there's a an intelligence to it, and mm -hmm. it's our divine right to tap into it. Yeah. And so I do that, and I hope to show other people how to do it. And I understand that what I'm describing is very intense, and some people have no <laughs> interest in doing that. But there are little ways that we can all do that in our everyday lives too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So with that, you know, how do you handle skeptics? You know, there, mm. people listening, you know, might not believe, you know. And I'm sure you come across skeptics quite a bit. Um, yes. So how do you how do you how do you handle skeptics um, or people who are skeptical about your abilities? Yeah, totally. I absolutely welcome skeptics. Like I also even with the anecdotal evidence and the amazing inex inexplicable moments that I've had in my readings, like I still find myself being human, and I still mm -hmm. have moments of is this real or am I making it up? And I think most mediums do, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think most yeah. of us are like, we are human, yeah. <laughs> like at the yeah. end of the day. So it's like, I myself am skeptical. There's a line between being skeptical and being disrespectful. And so mm -hmm. um, I'm always open to reading for skeptics and I have, and mm -hmm. you know, and it's though I like those readings because I feel the other side also stepping up mm. and giving the proper evidence that will make these um, skeptical clients perhaps consider mm -hmm. that there's something to this. I'm not yeah. trying to, I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything, but mm -hmm. I do think it's fun to like open people's minds a little bit, you know, mm -hmm, consider <laughs> certain mm -hmm. things, but mm -hmm. all in all, like there's a line between skeptical and disrespectful people who are disrespectful. I just like, don't pay any mind to people who are skeptical. If they are, truly curious and have open hearts like i i welcome them and I, i'm mm -hmm. willing to work with them as well definitely yeah definitely a good mindset to have you know um so with that 
what advice would you give to someone who is seeking guidance from a psychic medium for their first time, their first experience? Totally. Good question. Um, the first thing is like the psychic mediumship reading experience. It's totally normal to be nervous, especially mm -hmm. if you've never been to one before and have some jitters mm -hmm. before meeting with a psychic medium. Um, but the experience itself should really put you at ease. So if you do find yourself in a reading that's only amplifying your anxiety or magnifying mm -hmm. your fears around connecting with the other side or grief or loss or death, then I would not, I would leave the reading because uh, it's in, in my experience meant to be a very uplifting and positive experience. So jitters are normal, but getting into the reading and only feeling more out of control is, is grounds to leave um another thing I would say is like go into this reading with a specific person in mind that you want to hear from it if I've had people come through before just who are sheerly curious and it does make for an interesting reading but you're likely you might hear from someone who's trying to contact your mom or someone who was in your 11th grade English class who passed unexpectedly that you never thought you'd hear from. So the mm -hmm. more focused you can be going into a reading, the greater the outcome is going to be as well. You know what I mean? Like showing nice. up with some intention okay. is what I'm Definitely. saying. Yeah. Cool. Cause I, I welcome everyone, mm -hmm. but I really love when a person is seeking, you know, a specific contact. And I should mm. say also, Good mediums, this is this is a hot take um, and every day is different, but good mediums, they don't ask you questions. They don't ask you who you are trying to connect with mm -hmm. or um, anything like you show up and they they go to work and you yeah. relax <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's that's also something is for people to be kind of I guess what I'm saying here is like trying to educate people a little bit on like what is a, a mm. you know, trustworthy medium yeah. and what's a little bit shady and yeah. also how to best prepare so that you don't feel totally freaked out by what is actually a really lovely experience. Yeah. That's what I liked about your, uh, strategy or process. You know, you, you made it, made sure to like, you told, you know, my mom, like just answer yes or no. And, and, that, and that's it, you know, cause, right. cause I, I feel like, yeah, you know, the, the shady, uh, the fake, um, phony psychics and mediums, they might, you know, they're going to ask questions and they'll find ways to like give them the answer that they want, you know, and it's like so, fishing, fishing, fishing for information as yeah. opposed to the medium receiving the information. And then, yeah, I check with the person and I say, hey, I see that, you know, your father was a pilot. Mm -hmm. Can you confirm that your father was a pilot? Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then it signifies to the psychic medium that we're pulling the right frequency. Like we mm -hmm. are indeed connecting. We just need to build it by collecting more evidence yeah, yeah. from the other side, not from the client. Yeah. So I remember, gro I remember growing up too. I, I used to watch, uh, what's his name? John Edwards. Did you ever, uh -huh. were mm -hmm. you ever into him? Yeah. I do know John Edward. Yes. Yeah. He's like one of the biggest ones probably. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know what he's doing these days. I don't really hear about he's him. He's still, he's still working. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure like active on social media and all, you know, cool. how that industry has evolved yeah. as well. Cool. So now moving into, you know, your, the business side, your, Mm -hmm. um, your offerings. Uh, I was taking a look at your website and I see that there's quite a few of different, uh, courses that you offer. Um, talk to, talk to us a little bit about that. You know, what, what courses you offer, you sure. know, and what they are. Sure. Like in the first year of my business, I've been in business for two years though. It does feel like about 200 at this point, <laughs> <laughs> like the iterations that it's gone through the amount of people I've met mm -hmm. along the way. But um, the first like real passion project of mine was helping other people locate their intuition and their intuitive knowing, mm. um, because it's so often I would meet with people for a mediumship reading. And then at the end, they would reveal that they too feel like they experience, you mm. know, um, spiritual community or spirit communication or something like that. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. let me design something for all of these nice. people. And then recently I've been really passionate about boundaries, mm. not just, um, not just on the uh this plane on the mm -hmm. material plane which they're super important and we know that in recovery <laughs> that's important mm -hmm. but also um helping people with energetic or spiritual boundaries as well people who feel you know a little overwhelmed um whether that's like trying to go to sleep at night during a spiritual awakening or mm -hmm. going into a crowd and sensing you know other people like 
when I first was uh, awakening or whatever you want to call this, um, coming to my gifts and mm -hmm. all of that, I would like yeah. be in a room and just know way too much about everyone. And I didn't <laughs> want to know any of the information about them. Oh, wow. So it's just teaching people that side of things and how okay. the, that is also connected to the boundaries that we set in our real lives too. So that's, that's like really what I, I I'm focused on now, mm -hmm. but, um, I'm a, I'm an artist, dude. So like every, whatever information I get, <laughs> like whatever downloads I receive, I try to transmute it into a tool for other people, you know? Nice. And so who knows what's next? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the, the two courses and then your, uh, your mediumship. Uh, medium sh I do readings uh, I have like an automated meditation course too if anyone's mm, interested nice. in like exploring some of those meditative techniques that are used by professional psychics and mediums that is something that I have designed as well but yeah, yeah don't this you is do a good one do you do one on human design or oh human design is something that I recently really studied and mm -hmm. integrated into my practice um it's been extremely helpful as a practical tool to offer clients as well. So mm. that's, that's what I'm always trying to do is people come to me in very vulnerable states. Um, again, whether that's grief or just being lost in the world, uh, mm -hmm. this planet and um, human design was just another sort of avenue that I studied so that I can offer people more tools. Right. Mm, I feel like nice. a true medium, like what <laughs> come to me, I know a lot of things yeah, yeah. and I will try to like, uh, situate you on that correct path, you know, <laughs> whichever one resonates the most with your soul. Nice. Yeah. I have another girl that I'm perhaps going to have on for episode two. She's mm -hmm. a uh, sound healer and a Reiki practitioner. And she cool. was talking, she was talking to me about the human design. And then I think, I think I saw it on your website and then I was like, I don't even know what mine is, you know. Like, oh, I mean, you should check into that. I, I, so I did. I, I, I looked into it, and so I'm cool. a I'm a manifesting generator. Nice. You're so gonna you know, be you're gonna be great at running this podcast then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, how? But how accurate is this human design stuff? Like, because it's sure. like okay, so I put my I put my name, I put my date of birth, and my location, and then mm -hmm. it just it cranks out, you know, what your human design is, you know. Yeah. It, this this is definitely something that we should could revisit in the future because when I start talking about human design, it like literally, I won't stop. And so I'm <laughs> going to put a pin in this because it's like all of those questions will literally lead to a whole other level of consciousness. So, uh -huh. um, in the meantime, I suggest that you research your human design type as a, uh, manifesting generator mm -hmm. and your strategy, which is mm. to respond and then, your authority, which I don't know what it would be because I haven't seen your chart, but mm -hmm. your strategy, your authority, and your human design type are three things that you can study to begin mm. that process, which I wow. think I think you'd really like it, especially as someone who likes to research things and go down rabbit holes. Like human oh, yeah. design is pretty amazing for that. It never ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely gonna have to look more into that. Um, cool. Yeah. Do you know Do you know what yours is? Yeah, I'm um I'm a mental projector. Mental so a projector, projector, but a very weird one kind. <laughs> and <laughs> and if that, anyone that, Yeah, that resonates it, with you, right? Like, yes, yeah. totally. <laughs> it's it's uh oh yeah, there's so much to human design. And yeah. I, the one thing I want to say though is like anyone who's listening and curious about human design, it the reason I like it and why I studied it and then integrated it into my practice a little bit is because it really does offer practical tools, practical mm. application that feels uniquely tailored to you and your design. Mm. You know, like it, okay. there's like, there are, there is real guidance there. Mm. Um, and I find that when I share the guidance with others, that they, it deeply resonates with them. So whatever it, it, it is, there's something to the system that people mm. feel very seen by. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think I, you know, I briefly looked into it. And I think what I saw online was kind of like, it's a combination of astrology and psychology or something. And it's like, okay, I, oh, that's... I, can, I can, I can feel that. It's like um, several different spiritual systems combine into one is wow. what I would say. Nice. Um, yeah, you'll see influence of like the Kabbalah. You'll see influence of the I Ching. Mm. Um, the chakra system is really mm. big in human design, but like, yeah, here we go. I'm just, <laughs> so just yes, go have fun with that. Yeah, have yeah. a field day with that. <laughs> <laughs> cool.
Cool. And uh, so, yeah, tell me, you know, with running your business, you said for two years now, and um, you know, like, like we mentioned earlier, the state of the world and everything, um, mm -hmm. what, what is your goal moving forward? What is, what is your, your high level overview, like big, big goal, um, moving forward, you know, this year, the next five years. And, um, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, you want to continue to, you know, to help people and, you know, how can we empower people to become their best versions? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, something that I think about and seems to change all the time because I'm rapidly evolving as are you and most people that I come into contact with these days. Um, so it's hard to say like, what's the overarching goal? But my, my, I, I truly feel a large part of my purpose here is to guide others mm -hmm. um, and is to guide others back home to themselves. Mm -hmm. And if that means it's happening through mediumship readings or one-on-one -on -one work. That's great. Um, or, you know, it could be in coursework. It could be through art. I mm -hmm. don't know, but yeah. I, I feel like I am in a period where a lot of my skills are sort of culminating into something and I'm just trying to be patient and um, accept whatever that calling is. So nice. I guess all in all, I, I, I just want to guide others mm -hmm. and, I, yeah, I just allow, I, yeah, I am a very spiritual person. So I mm -hmm. kind of allowed myself to be directed as opposed to like willing my way through life. Yeah, definitely. If that makes sense. Cool. So, yeah. So, I mean, so I kind of, kind of closing it out, you know, like how can we help people become their best versions? You know, um, like we said, you know, with, with everything that's going on in the world, you know, just kind of sending our love out, you know, to people listening in and everything. Yeah. I just, I, again, I feel like language is important. And one way I don't necessarily see myself as like helping others. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm more of like guiding others. Mm -hmm. Um, if that makes sense, because I don't have all the answers and I oh. myself am super imperfect and <laughs> trying to figure everything yeah. out. But the biggest, the biggest thing for me through all this work is again, I feel like I'm an effective guide at guiding mm -hmm. people back to their own intuitive knowing. Okay. trusting their own impulses and system to mm. guide themselves mm -hmm. into the best possible iteration of their life. Yeah. You know? Perfect. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, lastly, I mean, yeah, go ahead and plug all your information. You know, we sure. mentioned, you know, how can they get their free I, I, on your mm -hmm. website? You had like the, the good luck charm. How can they get mm -hmm. that? How can they find your information? Totally. Everything is on um, sunlightoracle.com, www. <laughs> um, on there, you'll see there is like a pop-up where I mail out mm. Oracle cards. I've made my own Oracle decks. Like I've mentioned a few times, I have an artistic background and I mm -hmm. use that in my practice. And so I have individual cards from that deck that I will mail to your home <laughs> and you will receive nice. and you can keep it as a <laughs> talisman or put it on your car or whatever. And um, yeah, I'm available for readings. I nice. am consistently running different group courses and I'm also on Instagram, which mm -hmm. is like a big platform for me and my business, which mm -hmm. is just at sunlight.oracle. So very accessible, love connecting with people on the internet and my door is open. Awesome. Yeah. So that, that's pretty much it. You know, thank you for taking the time to meet with me, uh, Sunny and uh, wishing you the best in, in your future business endeavors and everything. And you too. And, and thank you for, for inviting me. It's really amazing. Thanks.